Hi guys, I'm Tammy. Welcome to my channel. If you are interested in painting this beautiful watercolor landscape, then stick around. We're going to talk supplies and I'll tell you exactly step by step how I did it. Let's go guys. So for the watercolor supplies, we have our sketchbook and I have it taped down. So I have a nice border, a smaller section of my water, and then of course my watercolor paints, which I have sprayed down. I always have a cloth or paper towel as well, and my pencil and eraser for sketching. And when it comes to the brushes, I have several here. I have a number eight round brush. You could use a number six if you want. I also like to use something for those flat details, especially the mountains and water. So this flat brush and a number one. This is great for all the details. Use what you have though, and just have fun with it. So first of all, let's do a basic landscape sketch. You don't have to do this, but it just puts things in order and gets us all organized for what we're gonna do. So a horizon line is what I like to start with here. And let's see, let's go ahead and do our mountain. So we'll do a mountain peak, and I do apologize if it's hard to see. Hopefully you guys can see this. I do want to keep it light so that we don't have those pencil marks showing through, which we're going to do a lot of layers. I'm actually not one that worries so much about pencil marks, but honestly, sometimes it does bother people. So we're just doing some details here. Uh, three little peaks, and let's go ahead and do some trees over here on the left side. So I'm just making these billowy shapes, nothing very detailed. Just laying out my composition, um, some trunks for a tree as well. And this is going to have a nice river or a body of water, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And so I'm excited to um, sketch that in. Uh, it's going to have some jagged areas as well. And so that will give us a really nice line for when we're painting this in. So on the right side, we're going to connect the other part of this body of water, lake, what have you. And of course, in our foreground and our background, on the ground, we're going to have some lovely details and all the things. So again, just light sketch. Don't worry too much about it. As you can see, I also hold the pencil really lightly and it allows me to make those very loose strokes, adding in some grasses here, the idea of that. And we can always change it up as we're painting too. So you don't have to be too worried about that part. Our flat brush is what we're going to start with. I will start painting in a lot of the details for this, especially in that first underpainting, and then we might switch to our round ones. Well, we will <laughs> a little bit later. So we're into this earthy tone here. It's kind of a gray color I already have, and we're using that flat side of your brush, and we're just using very loose brush strokes. We're going to create, that's going to be more the shadowed side. We're just going to assume that the light is coming from the right side. So it will be a lot lighter as you can see we're taking water and just spreading that color from the left over to the right side we'll add in lots of layers so this obviously is not the final product but just giving us an idea of where we're going from here all right let's do the other um, peaks over here again darker now I, this is a wet on wet technique where you're taking wet paint and adding it back into already wet paint it's a beautiful blending technique and it gives really nice lighter softer lines and also notice uh, again we're keeping in mind that the light is coming from the right side okay pick up your brush again we're just spreading that layer of paint we put on the left down to the right side as we did on all the others and so you might be thinking how do i add lines into these mountains to make them appear more 3d and more realistic well we're just layering it up and that's kind of the key to this so I've got this lighter brown color, just adding that into the right side. If it's going to have more light on that part, then we're wanting to use that lighter um, shade. It kind of looks like I'm doing four mountain peaks here, three or four, not really quite sure. You can always change it up. Let's add some green now, um, mixing up from our palette here, adding in some yellow. I have a lemon on the left. I have a cad yellow on the right. Those two make a brighter or darker um, green depending on what you want and I'm sticking with this square brush you could use a rounded one too if you want but just lightly laying in that paint now I've chosen to do light here because if this tree is in light we're gonna have some really nice bright colors it's very light maybe this is not as true to nature but that's okay we're going for a very colorful composition today 
I'm going to use a little bit more of that darker saturated paint, adding that in. And then we like to use some brown to just tone that down. We're adding the paint together to make our shadowed side of our tree. And I'm using a lot thicker paint than I was before, as you can see. I really want that dark color to show up. And when this is dry too, we can add more layers. But right now, with the underpainting, which is what we call it, or that first layer, we're just placing color where we want it to be. And of course, we can use that as a guide later as we're doing our second layers, or even third layers if we go that far. So it's really fun to be able to, to paint in a way where you can start very light and add in darker as you go, especially as it's drying. Uh, if you do start dark, you can never go lighter, so make sure you start light, and you can darken up your pigment at any time. This little reddish brown is one of my favorites. I'm adding that in to make the ground color here. It's a little bit more, um, I needed a little bit more water there. And flat side of my flat brush, I'm just following those lines that we put. I'm just going back and forth, kind of scrubbing on the paper. I might run out of paint a little bit, and we might get uh, more of a dry brush technique, and that's okay. And as you can see, I'm leaving a lot of white space. We will fill it in with various shades of colors and various colors as well, just to make our ground look really nice and realistic. So I had a lighter brown, kind of a golden brown that I added over this first layer, but I'm still really working with the first layer because I'm adding wet paint onto wet paint. Okay. And we'll figure out what we want to do with it later as it dries. Remember, I'm using the flat side of this brush, just that tip, lightly brushing back and forth on my paper to create these really nice lines and marks. I want them to be as natural as possible. Not that I'm going for realism, but I'm definitely trying to emulate as much as possible the reference photo that um, I was using for this. So same technique on this left side as I was doing on the right. We'll eventually add in shadows in subsequent layers too. But having this square brush is really nice because you're seeing the shapes. And if you had a round brush you were using, you're not gonna see some of those geometric um, shapes and brush marks as you do here. I really like the look of this. And I've seen a lot of artists when they're doing landscapes at least start out with, if not totally use, a flat wash brush. And I like this a lot. Okay, I'm washing out my brush. And I think for the next part, let's do some sky. Because usually I do the sky kind of at the beginning, but we're just doing it out of order and that's fine. So we're just going to blotch on some of this paint. I love to just scrub that paint around in the sky. And then we'll wash off our brush and actually take clean water to spread out this color. And let's do that right now. So just spreading it around. This sky is very light. You can't see a lot of sky because it's covered up by the tree and the mountain, or maybe it's trees, probably multiple trees. We'll get those chunks in there soon. All right, darkening up our shadowed side of our mountain. Again, just trying to define those peaks a little bit more. And I think at this part of the painting, it's important to check in with yourself and kind of analyze how you're feeling about painting right now. Are you enjoying this process? Is it feeling stressful? If it's feeling stressful, I always encourage you to just to step back, take a break, and just be aware of the thoughts in your head. If you're feeling stressed out, it could be that you're feeling like this painting isn't turning out the way you want it, or maybe your brushes are frustrating you, or maybe the type of paper or the paint you have isn't what you feel is ideal for this. So take a step back, analyze what's that thought, and then be able to change it to something more productive. Uh, as I'm darkening up these edges of this water, I want you guys to just be thinking about um, how you can change those thoughts into something more positive. Um, this is good practice. I like the colors of my painting. I'm learning a lot. Every time I paint, I'm getting a little bit better. Those are great ideas um, for more positive, realistic thoughts. All right, let's go ahead and add that lighter brown color that we had before. We're darkening up that part. We're still keeping it lighter though than the shadowed side and we'll darken up the shadowed side more too. With watercolor, I mean with lots of paintings and mediums, it's all about layering, but I feel like with watercolor especially because it's such a transparent medium that you lay down the paint it always dries one shade lighter than what you see on the paper. And so you most of the time have to go back in and darken up some spots 
And if you're being very conservative at the beginning and not going too dark, then you're going to have to do more layers and that's okay. It allows you to be able to analyze your painting longer and to be able to um, add more details and texture than if you just went dark and then you had one plain old color. So as you can see, I'm just kind of playing around with doing some lines here too. We want to emulate the ridges uh, for the mountains. So darkening up this place here, we're going to add in um, some green now. And this green is going to get significantly lighter when it dries, and that's okay. We just want a lot of texture in our ground. Oftentimes what I'll see people do with the ground is they'll just paint it one solid color, or maybe one solid color in one patch and a different solid color in another, it just gets kind of boring. Um, as you can see, I'm just darkening up all the parts that have already dried. That light side is really bright lemony yellow. The darker side will be um, a darker shade here. I'm just doing that medium color. If you want your objects to really pop and to look three-dimensional, you need to try to use three different uh, values, which is the lightness or darkness of a, of a pigment, three different values. So you can have a light one, for what is in the light, a dark one for what's in shadow, and then that mid-tone in between. Okay, so now this is all dry, and I did pause the camera so we could take a little break. So now we can continue with our layering, but I'm going to take some blue here, add some water. I do have some purple on the palette. That's going to show up in the color as well. We're going to be working on our water. Again, using our flat brush, dabbing it on the paper or the towel that you have, and just start making these lovely kind of wobbly brush strokes back and forth, scrubbing the paper here. I don't want them to be stick straight back and forth. That doesn't look very realistic for making ripples on the water. Then we just want to try to squiggle our brush ever so slightly kind of left and right as we're making these brush strokes now i probably will want to make it more darker towards the back in the background versus lighter in the foreground we'll see how we do it the amount of white space that we leave too kind of depends on if the water has a lot of movement and maybe there's a lot of foamy bubbles in the water. So that's something that you could figure out. You might have more ripples and such. We're going to darken up the water towards the back there as well and bring it towards the front. And this is such a wonderful practice. I love doing the ripples on water. I feel like adding in variations in the blues. If you're doing blue or aqua, whatever you're using, purple, um, variations make it really interesting and really fun to paint. Sometimes I can just um, have such a good time doing reflections in the water as well, especially if there's a sunrise or sunset and those colors in the sky are reflecting in the water. So pretty. All right, our green here, we're just going to go back over our ground now that that green that we had previously put is dry, just so that it shows up a little bit more. You might be surprised at how long a painting like this can take, but I promise you it really is worth it. It's worth taking the time and making the effort to just do the best you can, take your time, analyze how you want to add things, and that realism, if that's what you're looking for, is really gonna show through. Okay, adding in some more brown here. I have that reddish brown mixed in, and I love that color. I think I'll add it in the mountains as well for that shadowed side. I wasn't having that in my plan, but I really like that. So we have that dark brown underneath in the shadowed side, and then adding that reddish brown just Really, I'm liking how that's looking. It's creating a nice pop of color. All right, a little more in the background here. And very soon, we're going to add in some stones, some rocks around the riverbed. I guess I've decided it's a river now, so <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now I'm switching up my brush. I have a number one round, and we're going to do our tree trunks with a dark brown. You know what? On second thought, let's let's change that up. Let's do a light brown. And then what we're going to do is we can do some darker parts in our trunks if we want to with the dark brown later. So just adding that in, again, they're not going to be stick straight, so just make them a little bit wonky. That's totally okay. Some connector branches as well. And your trees are in nature. They're not going to be perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. And if you look around at tree trunks, you're going to see that they're all shapes and sizes. So I think I'm going to do just four here, and let's do some of those branches that are connecting down to the large trunk, um, holding up those branches. And you can do some little 
little marks, some V shapes within the foliage, or even just some diagonal um, little lines, little flick marks, just to indicate that there's some branches around. It's a nice little detail that brings a little bit more realism to your to your trees. So just kind of looking through, sometimes if you leave a lot of white space in your trees, uh, which is something that you can do, um, it leaves a little bit more um, space to be able to put in those little tick marks, but just go ahead and put them in there and it does the trick. It's the illusion that the eye needs to know that these are semi-realistic trees. Okay, now that that's done, taking our darker brown here, a nice little mix. We'll do some shadows here on the ground and I'm doing kind of a medium color. It's got a bit more water than maybe I need. I'm just trying to see if this is going to be dark enough for what I'm what I'm going for here. Remember the light is coming from the right side. So all these other things are going to need some type of shadowing. And underneath the trees as well, we want to darken that up because that space is going to be protected from a lot of the light. And let's go ahead and do some darker marks here on the trunks. You can't really see it maybe from the angle right now, but if you see it up close, you'll be able to see the subtle difference between the dark side, which is in shadow, and then the lighter brown that we put down. And I'm also going to darken up our shadows. I think that will be a good move because I'm looking at them right now and they're just kind of, they just seem like part of the landscape, part of the ground and not really differentiated as shadows, which is what I want. So sometimes you got to go bold. You can go light. And like I said, you can always darken it up if it's not quite dark for you. It's always good to be safe. This is my number eight round. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to go ahead and do our rocks, our stones. And so I'm just going to start off just doing these little blobs, these little marks. This is nothing really uh, difficult to do. Uh, just adding in, I think I really want to make sure that these stones here are going to be larger than the ones in the background because otherwise it's just going to look kind of silly. And I'm starting off really small, but I can go ahead and add in more of those as I see fit. Um, we like to do a lot of layers here. I like having the stones on the, on the area of the riverbed. I feel like it just, it's just the right thing to do. That's where you usually find a lot of stones. Um, some of them will be jutting out into the water. You can even put some just in the water, surrounded in the water. Maybe there are large stones that are semi covered up. And so I think that adds a nice thing to the, to the landscape. As you can see in the background, I barely really did any marks just really lightly just to emulate some of that and maybe there's some large stones in the background by the mountains too you can kind of do it however you want this is your painting whatever makes sense to you okay we're gonna do that medium brown now and just add that in um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it so much from your angle but it is gonna show up it's gonna be a little um, difference in the color value which will give some interest and variation to our stones. If you wanted to go really crazy, what you could do is you could take some white gouache paint and you could actually add some brown into that to make a really nice light, light brown. And that could be really cool little highlights on the rocks if you wanted to. So with our liner brush here, we're gonna dip into our green. It's time to make some more foliage and some marks. And I like to make it pretty dark at first. I'm gonna do a lighter one too though, cause we're gonna start painting with the lighter green first. So the idea is that I'm gonna do some grasses in this light yellow green color, and then we'll come back around and we'll do some darker grasses. So that gives that light and shadow look. And you're just flicking this brush. The liner brush is so awesome. You can use a rigger. Um, it's so flexible and the lines are really thin. I feel like they look very much realistic and I love working with a liner. I love a liner brush for veins in leaves and flowers as well. I use this thing all the time. So when you're doing your grasses or bushes, whatever in the background trees, just make sure that you're getting smaller so you can see that perspective. And I'm just gonna do some little tiny flick marks in the back. You don't really have to make it detailed because you won't see the details when you're far away. Even over here, just adding in some green at the face or the base of the mountain is great. So a little bit more here. You can take your brush too 
and just uh, go horizontally back and forth on your ground too, just to make some random marks. Don't be too calculated about it. Just allow that brush to be loose in your hand and sometimes you can be surprised at the texture that you get out of that. Let's do that dark grass here over the light one. And I think this just looks nice adding in a few different colors. Now you don't need a liner brush. I accidentally picked up my number one there, so I'm switching it out, but you can use a number one or number two. Just note that your lines will definitely be a little bit thicker. If you're okay with that, that's fine. I tend to like the thinner brush because I feel those lines look a lot more real um, than some of the other brushes that I could use. All right, so this is coming together nicely. Pretty much all of our details are done. A little bit more texture in the ground. If you wanted to darken up your water, you could as well. We can assume it's a really light, you know, it's a light sky, so it's a light cloudy day. So there probably won't be a lot of darker reflections in the water. I'm also gonna go ahead and darken up my shadows here. Thank you guys so much for painting this with me. I'm so glad that you are here. I really hope that this was helpful and that you learned something new in your watercolor journey. If you enjoyed this, definitely subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out when I go live, when I post shorts and full length tutorials as well. I do have a Patreon account as well. If you are interested in classes, you can click on the link in the description for all the information. And definitely let me know in the comments if this is something that you're wanting to try or if you have any questions or what your favorite part of this tutorial was. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you on the next video.